some people of gold. So I wanted to uh, discuss more about my post that I posted earlier today on Instagram. Um, this post of me um, listening to R&B music, and I was on my way to go skydiving. Just got finished. Yes. Um, but anyways, um, I wanted to kind of expound on that video and what I said. I couldn't really write everything because you're only limited to so much that you can write. Um, but I wanted to kind of expound on that and I wanted to go in a little depth about that video. Um, let me just say this. No, I am not saying to never go to church. No, I'm not saying that you should never fellowship with the Christian community. So if that's what we got from my video, um, that's the wrong thing to think. Um, what I want people, my, my hope is that we can mature in how we think God views us. Okay? Because a lot of us will attribute our behavior and how well we're able to keep the commandments as how God sees you. So basically, if you keep the commandments very well, or if you, you know, uh, do what you're supposed to do, then that means that God loves you and that you're good in his book. But if you don't, keep his commandments then God doesn't love you and he doesn't want anything to do with you and um, you know you're separated from him and that's just not true um, whether you do good or bad as a child of God as a son or a daughter of God God loves you and his faithfulness is not determined by how well we act his faithfulness is determined in just who he is it's just who he is it's his nature to be good it's his nature to take care of who belongs to him it's his nature to just be God it has nothing to do we don't provoke God to do anything because of our good behavior God makes a choice. He already made a choice before we were even born that he was going to take care of us. Why would a God make or, you know, make a creation and not take care of them? It's just not who he is. So, um, but back to the top, you know, back to what I wanted to say. Um, there are religious, there are certain days that we in the westernized culture or just some other cultures that we consider the Lord's Day or we consider a holy day and I just want to go ahead and let you know that no day is more holier than the next um, when David was talking about this is the day that the Lord has made I I'm leaning towards my thought process and what that means is that every day that you wake up is the Lord's day because he made it. If God has allowed you to wake up every morning, that is the Lord's day. This is the Lord's day. This is the Lord that, that, that this is the day that he has made because he has given you another day to live. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So why do we uh, only want to specifically honor God on a specific day when we can take it up a notch and honor him every day? And I'm not talking about honor him with sacrifices or rituals. 
I'm just talking about every day in your heart, you know who you belong to. And you have a heart for him. And you desire him. And you trust him. And you rest in him. You trust that, wow, my God has me. He's taking good, good care of me as his child. And so what we have done is we have specified which days, even the Bible talks about this, it doesn't really matter about which day you choose, whether it's a Saturday, a Wednesday, a Monday, a Sunday, no day is holier than the next. Whatever day that you, that we as, a, as, a, as brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, decide that we're going to come and fellowship together, doesn't make it more, more holier. You want to worship God on a Tuesday. It doesn't make it any more holier. You know? Just the fact that you belong to God, that's it. You know what I'm saying? I don't think we really understand the, 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 how big it, it, it is to belong to the Father. I don't think we get it. I really don't. I don't think we understand just how big that is. You know what I'm saying? And so we put up these, these rules and these rituals, and that makes it more holy. Oh, you know what? It's Sunday, and because we got our gospel music on and got our church clothes on, and we done checked off the list of what it means to honor God and what it means to look holy and what it means, you know, to, to, to do the will of God or whatever, and then we're good. No, honey, let me tell you something. You're good in God's book, not because of a day that you celebrate, not because of the music that you listen to. You're good in God's book because of your faith in Jesus Christ, period. Your faith in Jesus Christ is the highest currency that you will ever need. That's it. That's it. And so... And so... Um, it's just really, really important, you guys, that... I'm sorry, I'm trying to find this place. All right. Sorry. Anyway, so it's very important that we don't put unnecessary burdens on each other to appear holy or to seem holy because on this particular day, we're supposed to listen to church music because it's Sunday. I, you know, I just remember growing up and, you know, I would feel condemned or I would feel like God doesn't love me or I would feel that God doesn't like me because I wasn't listening to church music. Or I would get scared when, okay, I got on this, I got on this secular music. Oh, oh my God. You know, I would feel bad or whatever. And really, I, I've grown to learn that, Nina, your relationship with God is, is not, you know, defined by some music that you listen to, that you choose to listen to today. You know what I'm saying? And so I was, I was, you know, I was just kind of, yesterday I was just, I guess you could say I was talking to God. I mean, whenever I talk or whenever I preach, like I'll be in my house just preaching, you know, to myself or whatever. And I assume that, hey God, you're in this conversation too, okay? <laughs> you're included in this conversation too. But I just, it, it, it dawned on me, a thought came to my mind that God is keeping me. God is holding me together. The Holy Spirit is holding me together. I literally, I can do, I can listen to circular music and the next minute, the Holy Spirit is ministering to me or speaking to me or telling me something that I need to do or, or whatever. You know, it's not because today, oh, I was at church and I was in the presence of the Lord and that's why the Lord spoke to me. No, God speaks to me all the time. You know what I'm saying? When I say all the time, I'm, what I mean is there's no particular time period or, or, I, or I'm not, because I do something, it's not, it, that doesn't make me good enough for God to like talk to me or for God to use me or, or for me to seem holy to God and okay, we're, we're, she's, she's good today because she went to church. She honored today with me. So no, like I'm good with God because of my faith in his son period that's it and a lot
lot of us, we have idolized our traditions instead of resting God's promises. This whole year, for the most part, God has been just kind of reminding me to rest in his promise. Rest in me. Trust me. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm not sitting here telling you to do what I'm doing. You know? So, I made that post not so it can give people an excuse to not want to uh, go to church or fellowship with the body or have some type of accountability or um, no, still do what the word tells you to do. You know what I'm saying? But don't let these rules don't let don't don't allow your life to become about following rules. Let your life be about faith. You know, that's what that's what we need to to, to, to do is faith. Let faith rule our life. Not a whole bunch of rules. You know what I'm saying? And so, because um, we grow from faith to faith. We grow. We we, we mature. So once again, I'm not telling you to do what I'm doing. If you know that certain music, you know, is like a stumbling block for you, don't listen to it. You know what I'm saying? What I can handle, you may be able to handle. You know what I'm saying? Or if you know that in this season you need to be in church every Sunday, every week, or every week, then do that. If you if that's what you need to do, then do that. I'm not telling you to not to not go to church. But if you do miss a Sunday service, do not, what I am saying is, if you do miss a Sunday service, or if you do miss a Wednesday service, do not feel condemned. Jesus did not come to, to condemn us. He came to free us. That's what he came to, came to do. He did not come to condemn us. He came to free us. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, Rest in the fact that you are a child of God. Rest in that. Allow the Holy Spirit to shape and mold you. Do what the Holy Spirit has, is telling you to do. And if you have people in your life that really care about you, and they're telling you, hey, come to church, and you feel like you need to go, and it's necessary, go. You know what I'm saying? And so I don't, for me in my life, and where I am right now, I don't I don't live like that. I don't live where in, in condemnation saying, oh my God, I didn't go to church today. My goodness, God doesn't love me. No, I don't, I don't live like that. There are days where I go to church and there are days where I don't. But guess what? The Holy Spirit tells me I am accepted. I am accepted by the Most High. And it's not because I go to church every Sunday. It's because of my faith in Jesus Christ and that's it. And I'll be honest, you know, us fellowshipping with the body or whatever... Um, is, is in my opinion is very important it's very important to fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ because what God will do is he will create accountability and he will also uh, create uh, he, will, he will use the people around you to, to encourage you to build you up and not only that to um, help grow you help grow you you know you need that fellowship you need that but it doesn't always have to be in the form of 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 a, an established church building there are so many people that there, there are people that don't go to church but they still um, fellowship with the body they still have their bible studies they may meet at, at, at a house they may meet at a coffee shop they may meet uh, at a library there's so many places where we as a body can meet it doesn't have to be at, at an establishment you know what I'm saying in order for it to be at, seen as church it doesn't have to have Oh, we have praise and worship in the beginning. Then we have a sermon. Then we have the benediction. Then we have, it doesn't have to be that, like that, in order for you to grow in God. And let's be honest. God uses everything to mature his church. He doesn't just use you going to, going to church every Sunday to grow. He'll use your life. He'll use your job. He'll use, you know, your life experiences to grow you. You know, we have as a church, we have uh, minimized how big our God is and how able he is 
to uh, to all his children. You know what I'm saying? And when, like I said, once again, I'm not telling you guys don't go to church. I'm not saying that. Please, if you if if it's necessary for you to be in a church because you know that's what you need to do, do that. Please, go do that. You know what I'm saying? But if somebody that you know is not doing that, don't condemn them. Don't condemn them. Encourage them to, to, to you know, be around like-minded people who can, you know, build them up and encourage them in their faith. But don't condemn them because they may not be going to church every Sunday. Don't do that. That's not, that's not of God. That's not of God. And um, that's pretty much all that I really have to say. Um, really all I have to say. I just, I just want us all to just kind of mature in the faith. Honestly, mature in the faith and uh, mature in in love, you know, and uh, know this. God knows what he's doing with his children. And guess what? Who I am today, how I am today, that be how I'm going to be in a year from now or six months from now or five years from now. You know, that may change. And that goes for all of us, you know, we are ever evolving, we're ever changing. Let people go through their process in life. Let people get to know God for themselves. That's the best thing that we can do sometimes. Just leave people alone. <laughs> Honestly. Like, leave folks alone. And let, let, let them live. Encourage them, build them up, pray for them, admonish, rebuke, whatever you have to do. But sometimes... Sometimes you don't have to say anything. Sometimes you just trust in the Lord for people's lives. But yep, yeah, that's pretty much it. I love you guys. Y'all have a good, good afternoon. And y'all keep praying for me while I'm praying for you guys, okay? Alright.